Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. Or maybe this will be a super fantify. I still haven't 100% decided. You know, I could always end up changing these retroactively, but for now, it's a Crime Centric. This will be your show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Citadel Season 1, Episode 2. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, obviously, all of last episode gave us Mason's perspectives on things. This episode, we pick up with Nadia. Now, n we ended up getting a lot of clarification about my confusion about, oh, because I, oh, so Mason lost his memories from the explosion, but it seemed like Nadia still kept hers. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Turns out it wasn't like an accident. They lo both lost their memories on purpose. Like, I guess when their cover's and blown, like when they're in deep, deep trouble, they have a whole backstop system that I guess to keep them safe, they kind of have to disappear. And the easiest way to disappear is not remembering who you are. The unfortunate thing, well, because Bernard was like, okay, you got like two hours and I'm going to do the backstop. I'm sorry. And I'm like, what's that about? And Nadia was like, don't do it. Please don't. And we find out later on what the backstop is. It's like, hey, we're going to erase your memories. But um, I was about to say too, because like, it's like uh, the, the chip inside of him. I was like, how often does it update? But I guess it updates regularly enough. It's like basically there's a cloud system of all their memories. Um, which is interesting, which also kind of plays into Mason's things, but we'll, we'll get into that later. So at the very least, um, Nadia had the unfortunateness of running into a psychopath. Like, it's just like, oh, the guy that picked her up and decided to help her just happened to be some weirdo. God, I guess he felt like, oh, because you have a bullet in your leg, you're running from something, so you don't want too much attention. Like, the fact is he didn't take her to a hospital. He took her back to his house, and he handcuffed her. Granted, that situation didn't end well for him. Uh, once again, the brutality of the fights. I, I, I don't know what I was... But I, I like how brutal they are, and just, like, how, like, once again bare knuckle brawlish they are and like that 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 kind of because the tv the show's tv 14 once again i always underestimate how far at least i was seeing on imdb it's a tv 14 i don't i wasn't paying attention to ratings as much but the reason why i'm saying that's like I, I guess i always forget how far tv 14 can actually go with something because i forget like i mean arrow had pretty brutal fights and that's a tv 14 i mean it's not going to be like daredevil netflix brutal obviously but it, it kind of gets there without going that full step but um either way she ended up killing a guy i guess it's a good thing uh she had that two hour buck maybe he said two i could have sworn he said two hours who knows how long nadia was out enough for the home dude to like take her I don't know if that's, I doubt, no, that's definitely not what she was wearing on that dress. So he sh he stripped her down and put her in some different clothes, which is, makes that even creepier. But the fact is, luckily Nadia killed the guy, the psychopath, before uh, her memories ended up getting wiped. But it, that, that also, like I said, gave me clarity of like, okay, so they do both walk away with their memory. Because I was so confused because like the way the Nadia stuff was set up, I was like, the fact that she reached out to Bernard means she didn't lose, immediately lose her memory. So I was like, has, was she faking losing her memory? I was like, no, she lost her memory just like uh, Mason. And, you know, that's why it wasn't just like retrograde, like amnesia. It was like on purpose, like it was done by design. That's what I kind of got the feel from the trailer, like it was 100% by, by, by design, but with the introduction of the explosion, I guess it was meant to throw you off being like, oh, that's why Mason lost his memory, maybe that's why Nadia, but like I said, that was my confusion, why it seemed like she didn't have her, why she still had her memories. Either way, she ends up uh, obviously leaving herself a message before the backstop happened, and she told herself to go to, God, where was, it was somewhere in Spain, they said the place's name again, was it like, Valencia? Uh, but I'm wondering why specifically there. I wonder, did it have something to do with her? Because she said, like, go somewhere, and then she had wrote the name, she said Asha, which it doesn't seem like it's, I don't know if that is in correlation with where she ended up. Um, it didn't seem like that name came up, so it must have been someone she had ties to. Like, because obviously her identity is that of Charlotte. And once again, it's that jacked up thing of, oh, this is who I am. Even though it's not who you are, you have to take this fake identity and kind of embrace who you, uh, it make it seem like this fake identity that was created that's not you has to be the new you, which is kind of sad. I even love, obviously, I, they make, I made all the Jason Bourne ref references last episode. They, in fact, make a, she's like, because uh, Abby's like, what, like, this guy just shows up and says that you're Jason Bourne or something? 
And it's like, yeah. I mean, I do like that because the easiest thing to do would be like, once again, it's like the whole thing of, wait, this is a zombie thing, but you don't know what zombies are or what vampires are. It's kind of one of those things like we're kind of ignoring the pop cultural reference of this and that. So I do think it's always interesting when they do go like, no, this pop cultural reference does exist in this. Like, yeah, Jason Bourne is a movie that exists in this universe. So, But for Mason, it's like the only way he can keep his family safe is if he gets this case back. And, you know, it's also a little bit of, it's there's a little selfishness involved because it's like, hey, I can find. I mean, I'm tiptoeing towards finding out who I really am. I'm I'm on the cusp of it, you know. But it also seems like Bernard has some secrets that he's like, we should tell her. But it's like, no, we can't. Uh, at first, I was like, I I was wondering if that was like Bernard and Joe referencing their daughter, or was that them talking about Abby? Um, We're not going to find out something like Abby's actually a Citadel agent or, like, maybe she had her memories wiped, too? Like, I don't know if that's where we're going to go with that. Well, Because that was so interesting. Like, who? I can only assume they were referencing their daughter, but maybe not. Not unless we find out something wild. Well, because, like, Bernard was like, oh, yeah, like, she's with our daughter. But I was like, we never actually got to see Bernard's daughter. We only saw, like, we, we know... We, we didn't see Hendrix hanging out with any other kid. So I'm wondering, are we going to find something out like, could she be like Bernard and Joe's kid or something? Like, tell her the truth. It's like, that feels like that's, other than her own daughter, it feels like that's the only person they could be referencing. So, because I'm like, if that's the case, like, why haven't we met their daughter before now? Like, especially considering like, oh, she's supposed to be hanging out with Hendrix. I'm like, that's weird. So I was like, not unless that's going to be the twist where it, in actuality, like, Abby, because we don't know how Abby and the circumstances under which Abby and uh, Mason or Kyle met. So, we kind of skipped, obviously, we just kind of got into the deep end of the relationship of, oh, we're, we're married and we have kid a uh, kid together. But it feels like there's something there. But it's also like, if we, uh, we don't do that, because if you do, we'll be forced to tell Mason the truth about what you did. And I'm like... What's that? And I'm thinking, oh, about wiping his memory, but it seems like it runs a little deeper, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So Bernard takes uh, Mason and kind of throws him into the deep end. It's like, cool, you got to put on this suit. You got to sneak into this building. There's some backdoor biometrics I have snuck in here so that you're able to get inside. Try and get the case before they unlock it all. I don't worry about it. Just follow my lead. Uh somehow managed to go off without a hitch, and you're like, all right. But also, they saw Mason's face, which Bernard knew was going to be an option. It's like, yeah, but we needed to get the case back. And it's like, wait, you didn't tell me there was a danger of me putting myself out there, letting them know, because they thought I was dead for the past eight years, and now they know I'm alive, and they're going to come after me. And literally, not just the the twins, uh, but also, every Manticore agent out there in the world knows I'm alive, and they're going to, like, I mean, they went through a lot of trouble to burn Citadel to the ground, so they're going to make sure any remnants get burned as well. So it is kind of jacked up, and it's like, well, you didn't tell me that. It's like, I was, you told me to trust you. He said, yeah, but the fact of the matter is, I gassed, your fa I gassed you and your entire family and kidnapped you. I am really untrustworthy. I'm a spy. I was like, you're such a dick, Bernard. Because even he doesn't have a plan, and even Mason's like, what's this whole, like, you know, what about the whole Atlas having, like, every, you're such a super genius Atlas carrying everything on your back. But, yeah, he's like, I, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, Mason Kane will know. I'm like, that's so interesting. Like, you're a spy and everything, but you're not the plan guy. You're like, uh, I'm, the, I'm the support guy. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. I'm trying to figure this out just as much as you are. In fact, I'm probably in the worst position because you're the one, you're the top tier agent. You're, I guess, the planning type. So it's interesting that, like, he was gambling on all of that for uh, Mason to remember who he was and but I mean there's an easy way about that but we'll get to that in a second but it's like I guess he's been flying by the seat of his pants just doing everything he can to survive for the past eight years so I mean we have no idea what the full like what this eight years has fully been like for him we don't know what it's I mean for Mason and Nadia it's just been living the covers that they believe to be who they are But either way, uh, there is a device which, hey, you inject yourself with this syringe. It has all of your memories, but 
The problem is it's kind of a one and one and done, so you need to do it. And of course, you're in the struggle. Uh, them getting shot at, the car accident and everything. Mason's broke. So I don't know if that's like, I don't think that's the only copy. Once again, there has to be like a database it's pulled from, but they don't have access to the database or maybe the database doesn't exist anymore. I hope that's not the case uh, because that means like Mason, well, well, Kyle will never find out who he really was. Won't have no, never have any memories of who he once was. Like I said, I feel like there has to be like some backdoor like accident, but like, you, it probably takes a lot to get access to it, and maybe even Bernard's the only one who knows how to find it. So that, and he might be the only one to be able to access it. So I don't know, because it's got to be like, like I said, it's uploaded to some Citadel thing. So I mean, you never know. It could be a thing of that is literally the only copy of Mark. Uh, I keep about to call him Marcus Mason's memories because it could be a thing of. Yeah, it's like, a, oh, all his memories are backed up here, but they were all downloaded into that one syringe, and now that it's gone, all of his memories are gone forever. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think legitimately there's going to be a backup, because it'd be too dark and depressing for it to be like, yo, their memories are gone forever. I mean, to be fair, he's remembering Nadia of bits and pieces, so it, it's always a possibility he could remember on his own. Um a la Jason Bourne situation or God, there was another amnesia situation that was kind of like, oh yeah, blind spot. I was like, why didn't that immediately come to my brain? I, you know, it's like, uh, I was just watching something that had uh, Jamie Alexander in it too. So that, that's why I think it came a little click, click, a little closer in my head now, just because of that the tangents and all that side. Bernard ended up getting shot and captured, but luckily Mason got away, and he's going to go find Nadia, because the X case lets them know, hey, here are some surviving uh, Citadel members, which, to be fair, there were quite a few syringes in that case, so it's not just Mason and Nadia, there are a few out there, so obviously, like, every. Thing I've seen of the show is mainly focused on them, so maybe those other Citadel agents, maybe they've gone dark too. I mean, they're most likely in the same boat of, yeah, they don't have their memories. So, who knows if Manticore was, Manticore probably didn't find them. Well, at least Mason and Nadia, you know for sure were dead. I mean, they, Manticore thought they were dead, died on the, the train, and they've been, you know, because they didn't have their memories, they were able to stay low, but we don't know if anyone else was fortunate enough to be in that situation, because it could be a thing of, oh, they had their memories white, but because Nadia and Mason were already believed to be dead, like, the others were tracked down and killed, and it made it even easier because they didn't see it coming because they didn't have their memories, they didn't know about Manticore and what danger they're in. We'll, we'll have to wait and see if there's going to be any more uh, on that front when it comes to the... Um, any other Citadel agents we might come across. We'll, we'll have to wait and see, but... He eventually tracks down Nadia, and I love that he's really, like, leaning... Like, he doesn't say, like, hey, I don't have my memories. He just goes, like, I'm... I, I'm Mason Kane. Like, he leans into it. It's like, right, I gotta play this role, and he's trying to convince her, and she thinks he's crazy. Because I love that when he first approached her, he's like, Italy, eight years ago, and she's like, okay, the guy was already dead, and she, he's like, wait, what? What are you talking about? She's like... He's like, oh, I'm not the police. I was like, that is kind of mess. At least Mason's case, he woke up in a hospital. Uh, in Nadia's case, she woke up to a dead body. So that's enough to make you go. She was run she's been running ever since, worried that the past might catch up to her. The fact that she handled that like, hey, he was already dead. Like, oh, you were very civil about that situation because you're like, I, I mean, unknowingly, you did kill the guy. You just don't know that. So, I mean, I guess it benefits you that if that guy was found, I mean, who knows what other shady stuff he did. So it might have been a thing of, oh, we found out this guy's a serial killer or something like that. But also, you don't exist any in any databases. So they wouldn't have been able to match your fingerprints to anything else. I mean, maybe eventually they would have just because of... Well, no, because, like, Mason did all that, nothing came back all these years. It took, like, um, Bernard catching on to him because of him uh, putting his DNA out there again. And Nadia probably, I mean, Charlotte at the time, probably wasn't willing to put her DNA out there too much just because it's like, a, no, 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 I don't want to uh, take the chance that might lead back to that murder situation in Italy, so... But he's trying to convince her who she is, and she doesn't believe him, and kind of thinks he's crazy until he unlocks the until she unlocks the case, and it's like, oh, this is who you really are. I'm like, 
I was like, are we really about to do that? Is she going to get her memory back or is hers going to end up getting destroyed too? And neither one of them gets their memory back. Ultimately, she gets her memory back. Not until after, like, um... Was it Davlik? I, I'm, I'm blanking on the dude's n name now. Or is it Dalvik? Whatever the, the... One of the twins. Um... Beat the ever-living crap out of both Mason and Ernst. Like, also, that's also their thing, like... Just because they're... Oh, we're not holding any punches. You're spies. You can, you can get it just as hard as any other spy. It's like, Jesus. Once again, that's also where I was on. I'm like, yeah, the brutality of it. Like, they... Once again, it's not full MA, but they... Once again, that, that TV-14 stretches a lot further than I kind of... Um, always estimate. Maybe one of the twins was... Because he talked about, like, oh, my brother. I was like... Wait, who's your brother? It was like... Wait, did what? Did one of the twins die in that sequence? And I just would. It, it maybe he had such an unceremonious. He wasn't one of the people that Mason took down. Like did Mason did? I don't even remember. It's like Mason didn't kill anyone when he got the X case. Well, maybe they're referencing a different brother. Maybe they were triplets, and now it's just twins. I I don't I don't know. Because I was like, if it was taken, if you killed one of them, like it'd be a little more ceremonious. And there weren't like I said, I don't in that building. I don't think like Mason ended up killing anyone. But either way. Nadia got her memories back, and she whooped some serious ass. It's like, oh, you're going to wish I was dead, and took him down. And I guess it's like, right, we don't have time to... I mean, I think the easiest thing would have been to kill him, but it's like, that's, I guess, maybe more trouble than it's worth. But what's interesting, like I said, that creates an interesting dynamic of she's got all of her memories back, including some stuff that Mason doesn't know about. Because now it adds more context to the exchange of, he's like, I lied to you, and she's like, I lied to you. And I thought that was like, a, oh, because we have feelings for each other, I made it seem like what we had. It meant. It's like, we get glimpses of that through Nadia's memory, but it also seems like she, as well as Bernard, was hiding something from Mason that they knew. But now it's like he doesn't remember and she doesn't know he doesn't remember. So that's going to be an interesting conversation when he's like, yeah, actually, I don't remember anything about you. She's like, what? It's like, yeah, my vial is destroyed. And then we'll get an answer to whether or not um, there's backups to it. Um, another thing I should also talk about that we got some clarity for is Dahlia. Turns out Dahlia isn't, like, one of the main families of Manticore. She's a middleman. I was like, interesting. So, and even she's like, yeah, if if you screw the pooch on this, Manticore is going to be sending people after me, so I need you to do this. So, I was like, interesting. She has her ties to Manticore, but she's not, like, one, she's not one of the prominent families. I wonder, are the families just going to be like, oh, we're rich, powerful people behind the scene, which they've already set that up, but I wonder, are they also going to be spies themselves, or are the families just like, hey, we're powerful people who pay people to do stuff, but we're not trained agents ourselves. It's just kind of like a I mean, because I don't know how the... I mean, obviously you get like... I mean, especially because of the timing and stuff like that. Very Court of Owls type of vibe. I don't know if the... It doesn't seem like the Court of Owls... The Court of Owls are all just like powerful rich people. I know the parallel would be like if you've seen uh, Squid Games. It's like the VP, the VIPs. They're nothing like special. They're just rich and powerful people, right? So that's why I'm wondering is that what the families are? Do they have like maybe their go-tos like the twins? But maybe... Other than that, like, those are our enforcers. But other than that, we're just kind of like, we're nothing special. We just happen to be rich people. So maybe they'll be significant. Maybe they won't be. We'll have to wait and see. But it, like I said, I thought it was interesting. Like, because she's kind of set up as like, oh, the main bad guy. But it's like, no, she's just a middle person. So, but she might fill that role because depending on, once again, what the families are like. I mean, you have that power and position. They could, you know, have multitude of like, you know, enforcers kind of handle stuff on their part. So... But we do catch up with Dahlia, who has um, Bernard, and it seems like they have history. And she says, like, yeah, I have my, you know, I've always been able to turn Citadel agents. And I was like, interesting. So does that mean, like, could Bernard have been part of Manticore at one point in time? Does this have something to do with, like, the betrayal of the Citadel agents? Why, the person who betrayed, like... Once again, my money was kind of mainly on Bernard, but I, I don't know. We'll ultimately have to wait to see where all of this takes us going forward into the next episode. Obviously, I'm getting to this late. I think I talked about it in episode one. So episode three is already out, has been for a couple days. So I'm going to get to that at some point today. And so I'm really interested to see where episode three takes us with all of this. 
But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.